Hey, hey you guys, this is the fifth segment of the mineral chapter. Um, remember the last segment I stopped at the, at the most common rock forming minerals and that they only contain seven elements. So basically the earth crust is uh, containing seven or eight major amount elements. And this slide shows you those elements, the oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, the sodium, potassium, magnesium, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as I told you. And if you add this all up, you guys, if you add this all up, it's going to be 98.5%, 98.5%. So if you think about this, you guys, this is crazy because just about everything we need, just think about all the car, um, think about you can think of anything which is not listed in here. And, and as you can see, all the others in the earth crust is 1.5%. So this is where you have your gold, your titanium, your aluminum, no, aluminum was up there, sorry. Your, your titanium, your gold, your copper, your, um, I can come up with a lot of things which is in that 1.5%. So it's craziness, if you think about it. It's really, really craziness. Because that's why, you know, when you mine for, like, let's say gold, what do you think? How much gold does the rock have to contain for it to be a prosperous gold mine? What do you think? I don't think you would have uh, thought of it, but one gram per ton of gold in a rock will make a prosperous gold mine. Like for copper, it's about 0.6%. Now, it's also a big trouble because depending on the the price of the gold in the world, uh, a mine can be prosperous, non-prosperous. If it's right at the verge of being prosperous versus not, then depending on the, the price of the gold, the mine is going from being prosperous to not prosperous, prosperous to non-prosperous. So it's kind of a crazy situation. I know my son works for uh, Alcoa, which is one of the biggest aluminum company in the world. And, and it's the same with the aluminum price. You know, the aluminum price goes up and down, which makes the company being very prosperous or, or struggling actually and right now the aluminum price is really low so the company is struggling a lot and hopefully it will come back up and so it gets better I do want you to know these elements in order you don't need to memorize the percentages though but you do have to know them in order like oxygen silicon aluminum iron calcium sodium potassium magnesium you can say like blah, 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 but but or you can just say it's low, but you have to know it, okay? Uh, also, remember, these are elements. You have to know the symbol. So if I, if I put them in order with their symbol, you still have to understand it. Now, as you could see, the, I can go back. As you could see, the two most common elements is the oxygen right here and the silicon right here. And... Those are the most common element uh, in the earth crust. And actually they are forming the most common rock forming mineral group, which we call silicate, silicates. The silicates are very interesting uh, minerals and their structure is even more so because if you think about what is the living things made of, remember it's mostly carbon oxygen and hydrogen and interestingly in the living things the carbon oxygen and hydrogen the hydrocarbons are making just as complicated and interesting structures as the silicates do in the non-living things so it's very philosophical like really we have very similar silicate structures and you can be saying yourself lucky because you don't have to learn all these uh, hydrocarbons they are they are much more uh, plentiful and somewhat more complicated than the silicate structure so be be thankful that you only have to learn uh, silicate structures. Anyhow, let's jump. Depending on the, the amount of silica and oxygen, we'll have different structures. This here is the very basic silicate 
structure, the unit of the silicate structure is the silica oxygen tetrahedron. So uh, the chemical formula of it is SiO4, as you can see right here, SiO4. So this structure is going to make a tetrahedron just like he, uh, on this picture right here. And the red ones are oxygens, and in the middle is the silica, silicon. Now this here is a covalently bounded molecule. And actually, if you look at the molecule from outside, they will have four negative. So it's not a full-filled molecule, but it actually will, um, will act as a... Um, polyatomic anion. Polyatomic anion means that it has more than one uh, anion in it, like silica and oxygen. In this case, the silica will act as a cation, oxygen as anion, and oxygen is, remember, minus two, so four times minus two is eight, and the silico silicon is plus four, so eight minus four is going to give you four negative uh, charges. So this is a so-called polyatomic anion. I, I write it right here. Poly, poly, atomic anion. polyatomic anion with four negative charges. And you will see in the crystal structure, this will be actually forfeit by cations, and that's how the silicate minerals are forming. Now, uh, based on the sharing of oxygen atom, we have more complicated silicate structure, and you'll have to know the isolated, the chain silicate structure, double chain, the sheet silicates and the frame. We have more and uh, more of them, and they are somewhat more complicated. So you just need to know the basic ones. By the way, so here we are. This is the isolated. Isolated. They also call them uh, island silicates. And as I told you, these guys uh, have four um, oxygen, and the silicon is in the middle. And it's a polyatomic anion, just like that, with four negative charges. So the cations are going to be among these uh, tetrahedrons, uh, fulfilling that four negative charges. The next one, the chain or inosilicates, if you see the word ino, that stands for that too, inosilicate. Uh, these guys will actually be shared uh through an oxygen atom so there is one here one here these guys are shared with each other so it, this one shared with this tetrahedron and this one so here we are and their formula even though it says yeah their formula is si2o6 but you can actually simplify it so it could be sio3 but we do because in the in the silicate minerals which have um, SiO three sorry it's not two three I just knew something was not right so it's a three I wonder if I can do this again yeah Si O three and the three oxygen would be six and the silica would be four, so it would be minus two. But in real life, this usually occurs as Si2O6, like it says here, and then it's at, uh, minus four. So this is the so-called chain or inosilicate. Oh, it took the ino off to chain or inosilicates. And the cations would be right around here and along the, and then the other inosilicate chain right here. And then, you know, this is where the tetrahedrons are shared through that one oxygen atom. So that's another. And these are the cations right here. And you'll have some right here. 
and that's how the minerals are forming. Okay, the next one is the double chain. The double chain is when two chain are also being connected by a shared oxygen atom in the tetrahedrus in between two chains. And the, the formula of it is Si4O11, and it has minus 6. This is the biggest. Uh, so it's Si4. 4, O11, and O11 is like 22 and 16, so it's going to have minus 6 to be fulfilled by the cations. Oh, very important thing I forgot to tell you. If you look at the silica to oxygen ratio, see one silica for oxygen, so the silica oxygen ratio is 1 to 4 here, in the inosilicates or chain silicates, it's one to three because we have two and six, so that's one to three. And then in the double chain, it's one to 2.75 because the 11 divided by four, that's 275. And the next silicate structure is the sheet silicates. When you have sheet silicates, the oxygen, the, the silica oxygen tetrahedrons are shared through oxygen atom in a whole sheet okay so and the silica oxygen ratio is is 1 to 2.5 and the formula is si 4 o 10 and that's what makes it uh 1 to 2.5 it has four negative charges that drawing is not very pretty but there is the other way it's written here too so you can see it so it's si 4 o 10 four negative charges to be fulfilled by the cations. And the very last structure is the framework silicates. The framework silicates when the oxygen atoms are being shared in every direction. So these are three dimensional structures and uh, the very, very basic structural group um, in this 3D structure is the, is the SiO2, which is basically the quartz. And the silica oxygen ratio is one to two. And remember the the ratio at the beginning was one to four. So for one silicon atom there was four oxygen and now for one silicon atom we have two. So basically these minerals are gonna be more enriched in silica than oxygen. Okay, so this is kind of important and the reason that I'm pointing it out is because at the igneous rocks it's going to be a very important factor. Um, what do you have to know about this on the test? If, if you want to be really good and you want to get the full point, I want you to, to show me all of them actually and uh, you have to know the formula, the the oxygen, silica oxygen ratio, their name, and you could sketch it. It's not very hard to sketch these guys, like the, the chain silicate. This is how you sketch it. See, that's the chain, and these little triangles show the silica oxygen tetrahedron Z right here. And then you can put like SI two or six this is a two and they have four negative charges minus four I cannot put the four right here and the silica oxygen ratio is one two three okay so this is perfect for the chain silicate okay so it's not that hard to do um, and when you are at the double chain, you can draw it like this. And like that. See, it's actually, and put the little triangles in and so on. And it's SI4011, 6 negative charges. minus six I, it doesn't let me write it but it's minus six remember minus six and the silica oxygen ratio is one to two point seven five now if you want to draw the the sheet silicate 
it's okay if you just draw it like this I, I understand and it's a si4 410 so you really can uh, you can do this it's not that hard and it's minus 4 okay and then the I wouldn't worry about drawing this one I would just write down the SiO2 and the silica oxygen ratio is one to two so if you draw and and list it and sketch it except the framework circuit you're good to go uh, now we're gonna turn our discussion to the systematic look at the most common rock forming minerals and we're gonna start with the silicates and then go into all the others so I'm gonna stop at this uh, this is the end of this segment and I will continue it on the next one okay